Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. In this episode, we're focusing on one of the most significant gatherings of municipal leaders in the province of Manitoba, the AMM Fall Convention. Later on this month, over 800 delegates from across the province will come together for the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Annual General Meeting. This year, from November 25th to 27th, the convention will host elections for the AMM's Executive Committee, including the positions of President and two Vice Presidents, each serving a two-year term. One of those candidates running for the Vice President of the Manitoba Municipal Association is Sandra Smith, Mayor of Stonewall. We spoke with Sandra about her candidacy, her vision for the role, and what she hopes to bring to Manitoba's municipalities if elected. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But well, we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Sandra, thank you so much for sitting down with me this morning. I just want to take a brief moment and ask the simple question, but the overarching one. You've decided to put your name forward to become one of the next vice presidents for the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. What was that decision based on? Uh, Chris was actually, first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to sit down with you. I do appreciate that. Um, this is our second sit down and the first one was such a pleasure. So it was a easy yes for me to to take oh. the invitation. Um, so there was a, a number of factors, I guess, that, that went into my decision to run. Um, I've had the opportunity to be on the AMM board for the last couple of years. And uh, sitting around that table has been very... Uh, insightful. Um, it's been good camaraderie and I wanted to expand my role and the opportunity came um, with an open, you know, the election coming up and I wanted to take that opportunity and challenge myself and challenge, um, you know, kind of what I think I know and what I don't know. Um, and I just wanted to expand on on my, uh, my ability to be able to get back into our community and to the province. Municipalities are, uh, I don't want to say struggling, but they're facing a swath of challenges in today's world. And the next board, the new vice president, the two new vice presidents and the new president will have to work on some major big files. Uh, we were talking before the interview started and I was just going through the resolutions and it seems like there's a large amount of different policies and resolutions that different municipalities want. What do you bring to the table that gives you the ability to work on so many different files that so many different municipalities will be faced with in the coming year, two years, three years? I think what I can bring to the table is I have the ability to look at an issue, uh, break it down, um, ask questions when I don't understand. I mean, I, I don't know all of the issues inside and out because a lot of them don't affect my immediate surrounding, but part of the job is to to understand the issues across the province, to sit down with the people that are facing these issues and really get a feel and a sense for what the issue is, what solutions can we work on to try and solve it, and then advocate at the provincial level uh, to get um, those issues solved. And I feel like I can articulate myself enough and I have that professionalism and good connections and relationships that uh, would enable me to, to get the point across. And what do you see priority number one as being for yourself as vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities if you were to be elected in uh, at the end of the month? Um, so I think the, the number one priority would be um, sitting down with the the executive uh, that had been nom that had been elected, sit down with the board, and really kind of refocus and and shape how we want to move forward and, and make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, to deliver the best product of AMM and to make sure that all of the voices are heard. I want to talk about some of the issues, if you don't mind, for a few seconds. And I want to talk about one that I, jumped out at me, and you and I had talked about it in our 
previous conversation, and that is policing and bail reform. Mm -hmm. uh, municipalities across the province are asking for the pr provincial government to do more on policing and to do more on bail reform. While bail reform is a federal issue, it is something that municipalities have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You and I talked in our earlier conversation about safety and policing concerns in Stonewall. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself being able to bring something new to the table to help get this addressed? So I, I think right now um, we do have re a really good team in place that are working on uh, policing issues with the RCMP contracts. What I can bring to the table is, is you know, lived experience. Um, I don't have all of the answers. And if I did, we wouldn't be having this problem. Um, but I think just continuing to advocate and make sure that the provinces, and they are well aware, but make sure that they are well aware of the downloading that our municipalities are facing. Uh, Stonewall is one of the 21 uh, municipalities that do have an RCMP contract and we face those challenges every day and our costs are, are increasing so just that that strong voice um, continuing to advocate and make sure that the province continues to advocate with the feds municipalities yeah. have to be heard what would what, what what does that mean to be heard what's the thing that their municipalities are screaming at right now that the province isn't being heard or isn't hearing that you wish they did hear I think they hear. Uh, I don't think that's the, <laughs> I don't think that's the issue is not that we're not being heard. It's that we're not getting the results we're asking for. And so then I'll, then I'll flip the question then. What can the province do tomorrow if elected on uh, during the convention, mm -hmm. you, the first meeting with you and the attorney general, or you or the, uh, you and the premier of the board and, and the, pre, and the premier, mm -hmm. what would be your ask to say, okay, this is the one thing you can do right now to help municipalities on the policing file? Because this is not a concern that I've just heard from you. It's mm -hmm. a concern that I've heard from many different municipalities when I was at AMM in Brandon this year. So all of the costs are being downloaded to us. I guess we would be more funding them. We we need more funding. If we're, if, if we're expected to uh, pay for it, then we need more help in this area. We need the funding for it. So increase the funding. Simple, but it's simple, but sometimes a hard answer to uh, a hard ask to do. Mm -hmm. On that note, can you call a spade a spade? Because you're going to be dealing with a lot of different cabinet ministers and you're going to be dealing with the premier. And sometimes they're going to be doing things that the municipalities just will not want or will mm -hmm. not need. So when you go into meetings, are you able to say this is not what we want right now or how do you see your presence in being a collaborative vice president with the provincial government, knowing that sometimes you're going to have to be a little bit more combative than collaborative? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would go in being combat combative. I, I don't think that's the right approach because I don't think you get anywhere with that. Okay. I think if you go in and you, you are, we know that um, we're making a lot of progress with, with the new provincial government as far as being heard and, and we're, we're getting some results. I think it's just keeping those relationships on a positive note, making sure that you're a strong advocate and going in, not just kicking and screaming, but asking, you know, we want to be at the table. We, we work in the trenches every day. We have the knowledge. We can come with solutions and help make life easier for municipalities. So I, I think that's the approach that needs to be taken and just building on those relationships to get those results. We, we we talk about some of the issues and policing being one of the big ones, but the second one that I heard a lot was infrastructure funding. Mm -hmm. Municipalities only have one uh, revenue stream, one major revenue stream. They do have others, but one major, and that is property taxes. Mm -hmm. Municipalities are seeing infrastructure age out. They're seeing bridges uh, deteriorate. We're seeing roads in disrepair. We're seeing just the sewer lines underneath the roads needing to be replaced. Mm -hmm. How do you see the role of AMM with you as vice president in addressing the infrastructure challenges that whether it be all the way up to Snow Lake, whether it be down to Steinbeck or even out to the RM of Stiftston, how do you see yourself being able to address all the unique, different uh, challenges that rural and urban municipalities face in your pres in your province? So, I mean, there is no difference between rural or urban. We, we I mean, other than the the obvious, but the, the the challenges and the needs are the same. We 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 both 
you know, we both need more infrastructure dollars. Um, and yes, the one way that we get our our funds is through property tax. But another way we could we could possibly get more and more dollars is being exempt from the PST. That's something that the AMM has been calling on. Um, that would alleviate some of the pressure for us not having to pay that tax. So um, it's just keeping keeping an open mind as, as different funding formulas that we can create. And um, that would be one of them for sure. What are you hearing from uh, members about what they want in their next AMM vice president or one of the two AMM vice presidents? I think that members want somebody who will be able to strongly advocate for them, someone that has common sense, someone who is open and transparent, um, accessible. I think one of the the things that I'd like to bring to the table is is bringing the message to a of AMM closer to everyone. I mean, we went through a, a prevent or municipal election a couple of years ago. We know that you know half of our uh, new councils are are new, fifty uh, percent. So. Uh, it's getting that message that AMM is here for you. You don't have to go it alone. Uh, we are stronger together and use AMM. We're your voice. We're your voice at the cabinet table. So if there are issues um, you feel that you're not getting enough attention on or you're not, you don't feel you're being heard, let us know. So part of my role would be to um, be more accessible, not saying in the past that AMM wasn't accessible, but just getting the message across that here's AMM. This is what we do. We're here for you. One of the roles of the vice president and even president is a lot of work in Winnipeg, a lot of work in Portage the Prairie, where the AMM office is. Um, you were a mayor of your own community, and I can imagine that is a full time job in itself. And this job as vice president is going to be a lot more work compared to what you were beforehand as a director on the board of AMM. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared to sort of? balance home life, work life, and then AMM life as well? Because I'm assuming the next vice president is going to, as we talked about some of the challenges, is going to have to deal with a lot more as we're getting into this sort of new uh, fiscal reality that we're living in. So can you guarantee to the members who are going to be voting that you're going to be willing to or able to commit all the time that you need to be the next vice president? Yes, I would not be running for vice president if I was not fully committed and if I did not believe that I would be able to give 100% to this role and still manage uh, home life and my role as mayor. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go into it not knowing what I was getting into. Does your community support you in that way too? Because they're the ones who voted for you as mayor. I'm assuming they didn't expect you to be vice president, but you, you've you decided to run for that position. So does your community support you as well? Um, I believe that they do support me. Uh, my council supports me, my administration. Yes. Um, if, that's, if that was your next question. Um, yes, they've actually, um, they encouraged me. Um, you know, it's like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you run Sandra? You, you can do this. And, and they do have faith in me and I have faith in myself. And um, I think anytime um, somebody takes on a larger role and perhaps brings a little bit of a spotlight onto your community, I think that's a good thing. What role do you see AMM playing in the future of uh municipalities in the province of Manitoba with you as vice president? The role I see for AMM in the province with municipalities with me as vice president is a role that would be more visible. I know that we do our, our municipal visits um, once a year. We the formula for doing it is you you go to the municipalities that have the the most new new council members and that visit is once a year so everyone gets a visit in a four year cycle i would like to see that increased i think that our presence at everyone's council table a little more than once a year would would benefit our members that's a lot of travel though that's a lot, a lot, because uh, you're in Stonewall, which is, I and I hate, I hate to say central, but it is kind of central to the grand <laughs> scheme of things. Everything in Man Manitoba, um, but you have communities that you have to fly into. You have communities that are just around the corner from you. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of travel, and that's a lot of dedication on the road. Um, do your members want more transparency? Do they want more? So not transparency. Do they want more? 
connections rather outside of those two major meetings that you have in Winnipeg or in Brandon, whenever they are? I, I think connections and, and to say that, you know, we need to be more visible. It, it doesn't just fall to the executive. It, it could be the directors mm. that are, that are, you know, um, making the rounds a bit more than, than just the once a year. And, and some directors do that. Um, I just think we need to be more involved, more engaged and, when you do that, you have a stronger membership, stronger, stronger municipal, stronger AMM. Do you see the organization being more member focused under your vice presidency, or do you uh, see it more as an executive approach and then telling the members how your advocacy work is going? I believe we need to be more member focused. That's that's what we're here for. We're here to represent our members, and without the message from our members you know, why do we exist? We we need to have that um, that voice from our members and we need to know what the issues are that are important to them. And then our role is to properly advocate for them. When I was at the AMN convention in Brandon, the one thing I heard over and over again was with Winnipeg being a large urban center and it was right after an election with most of the NDP MLAs coming from Winnipeg, some of the rural issues and some of the smaller urban issues are not being heard. How do you see your approach in making sure those members feel like they're being heard with this government? Because as a smaller uh, mayor, a community member, mayor yourself, I can imagine sometimes it's hard to have your opinions heard when you do have such a large city like Winnipeg taking up a lot of the conversation most of the time. Yeah. Um, I think to be fair, most members were worried that with an NDP government that the rural voice would not be heard because most of the, the MLAs are in Winnipeg. Over the last year, I believe that the government has made a really good conscience effort to make sure that they get out to rural municipalities um, to make sure that uh, we're still being heard. Um, just as an example, probably a month and a half ago, uh, Stonewall had a visit from uh, an NDP caucus members. I believe we had four ministers, um, a handful of MLAs, um, and they spent some time in Stonewall uh, learning about our issues, what was important to us, what we were you know, doing here. I don't remember that ever happening. And granted, we're, we're closer to Winnipeg, so maybe that was why. Um, but I think they need to keep doing that. And um we need to make sure that they don't just stick within the perimeter, that they get outside the perimeter and see what this beautiful province has to offer and find out, you know, those issues that are happening that maybe don't trickle their way up to Broadway. In municipalities, we often put metrics into place to know the success rate of an initiative or a program that you want to achieve. What metrics are you going to put in place as the potential next vice president to say, if I'm going to do a good job for my members, we need to get A, B, and C done. Are there metrics that you're going to put into place to ensure that you are going to achieve what you want to achieve as the potential next vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities? So I think, you know, it's, it's, um, as far as metrics are in place, here's for an example. You know, we have we have standing policy items, we have resolutions, um, items that we're calling on the provincial government for. When you when you're able to have uh, you know um, one side, here's my issues, and then a year later, here's the results. Those are the metrics. You and think you, no, go ahead. You know, sometimes you, it here's here's the issue. If you're even getting a movement in the, in the right direction, I think that's a success. You're not going to get all the check marks right away. I mean, there's there's some issues that uh, we've been pushing for for years, um, and you, you know you you keep you keep you know pressing forward. You you make sure that the your voice is heard about the issues, and and hopefully at at some point you you get that check mark. Before I let you go, I I need to ask the big question. Mm -hmm. And we kind of talked about it at the beginning of the interview, but I want to get a little bit more focused here. Why should members put their trust in you as the next vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities? Members can trust that if I have a voice 
they will have a voice. I will not leave anybody out in in the cold, so to speak. Um, if they have issues and they want to be heard, I will be there for them. I will make sure that I represent the members with uh, a degree of professionalism, um, integrity, and I think that they should feel proud knowing that they've got good people in place to represent them. This is a unique time for municipalities and you're going to be meeting in Winnipeg later on this month. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you want members to take away from those three days at the MM convention this year? I want them to take away a sense of pride, knowing that they're representing their municipalities um, I want them to take away a sense of renewed, um, renewed friendships, renewed enthusiasm, and a renewed um, commitment to making sure that they represent their municipalities to the best of their ability and that we give them the tools to do that. Sandra, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It is always a pleasure to sit down with different candidates and also different mayors from across Canada. And every time I talk to you, I go away feeling a little bit more happy because you just bring <laughs> life to me and you bring life to the show. So thank you so much for doing this interview and look forward to seeing you in Winnipeg later on this month. And hopefully we can grab a coffee and uh, I can follow up on that promise of coming back out to Stonewall this year. So I will be there after I'm done at the convention. So looking forward That's to visiting awesome. Stonewall as well. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button because over the next month, we're going to be trying to sit down with as many as the candidates as possible who are running to be president and vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. We will also be live on location in Winnipeg from November 25th to 27th. So if you see us there, come over and say hi to us because we would love to chat with you about your municipality or what your key concerns are in the municipal sector in the province of Manitoba. So until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Till then.